up? This is uh, TJ and Craig of Escape the Fate. And, uh, down. This we, is some of our, uh, a few of our crazy tour stories because there is a bevy of them. First one uh, we'll talk about is um, me and Craig have a side project called the Dead Rabbits. We did like a quick like two week run out on the west coast on the HK Army bus and we decked this bus out with like party gear. We had uh, I mean, fog strobe lights, fog machines, speakers. It was basically a club on our bus. Like we would go outside and ask random people like, yo, where are you going? They'd be like, we're going to a club. We're like, F that, just jump on here. We'd bring them on and literally we would have like 30 people on, in the entire bus that you could crowd surf to the back. You could, and we would and always try to see how much we could get the bus to mount. The last day of the tour, it was our guitarist's birthday. So we were definitely going hard for his birthday. I think a fan made him cupcakes. cupcakes. It was a pizza party tour too. It so was a pizza party tour, so we would have pizzas every day and you know fans could come eat pizza and just party with us and hey, hope you have fun at the show. So we had pizza on here, we had cupcakes on here. Last day of the tour already, we had just cleaned the bus that day and then Escape the Fate was going to use the bus for a festival seven days after our tour ended. So we realized how much we trashed the bus, so we told the HK guys, don't worry about it, we'll, you know, we'll, pick up, we'll pick up the mess. We thought in our minds, for we some odd reason, we're like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just clean the bus when we get it back in seven days, because there's only like a, some beer bottles and stuff around. We walk on the bus, dude. Pizza in the carpets, uh, cupcakes in the carpets, it had been, the bus had been sitting for seven days in the heat. No AC. Food everywhere, drinks everywhere, old sticky beer cans. And, and there we were... literally got on, got on here in the morning and we had the show that night and the rest of the guys were going to come. So we're like, they already think we're the No, but the ones. worst part is there were maggots. Maggots. Coming out of the carpet. Coming out of the carpet, I opened up the refrigerator. There's like, like seven days. Gnats. So, yeah, gnats come flying out at me. So It was so So we were like, oh my god, we have to have this bus clean and ready to go for Escape the Fate. So we went to Walmart and spent like $100 on like cleaning supplies and when like hazmat suits yeah. on the bus were just like bleaching everything. Yeah, literally get... the carpet underneath like these two seats right here that's yeah. underneath the little table. I sprayed it and vacuumed it and sprayed it and vacuumed it for yeah, at least an hour and kept, a half they and they just, just kept coming out. out of the carpet. It took me an hour and a half to finally get rid of all of them. But oh, yeah, we cleaned it and it was uh, it was all cleaned up by the time the escape guys got on there. So that was a rough four hours, though. I had no idea how we were going to clean that bus in time. Well, there's number one. Yeah, there's a few. I mean, how many were we going to talk about? We're supposed to talk about one more. This one, this one's kind of embarrassing and it's a little sad, actually. We're in Canada. It was back in uh, 2008 on our This War Is Ours tour. One of the other guys had a girl in his bunk. Our bus call was like 3 a.m., so. Everybody's actually laying in their bunks for once, all asleep, except for one of us. One of us has a girl in his bunk, and you can just kind of hear little moans and stuff. And you can kind of hear the rest of us, like, kind of chuckling in our, in our bunks. And you can kind of see the curtains, like, shaking because we're, we're chuckling so much. <laughs> I mean, even, we had, we had a female tour manager at the time, so I mean, even she was cracking up. All of a sudden, out of the blue, you just hear the loudest thump. We all rip our curtains open. And what do we see laying in the hallway? A naked girl. <laughs> because apparently he had finished and was like, okay, and went to go get her off of on top of him. He had the top bunk and she just fell out of the top bunk <laughs> and slammed on the ground on the floor. And we lost it. The bus broke out in a frenzy. It was in but wait, you, hilarious you guys sad. were driving though when this happened. No, so the bus was still. So you think, oh, they were driving, so maybe she just kind of fell. No, no it was just like, okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> and she fell out. I know she was probably really embarrassed, but I was super embarrassed too because then me and my toy manager McCall at the time, we got out of our bunks and like held up a sheet, and we were like, okay, just get dressed. But I was like this the whole time, like <laughs> laughing behind the blanket. Oh man, I felt so freaking bad. All right, here, I'll give you another two stories that TJ here is mixing up as one story. Two quick stories. Me and TJ were part of the Buffalo Club. We were on tour with Alisana and Motionless and White, the Dead Masquerade tour, right? Yeah. 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 The naked girl was not the girl we made get off the bus. The naked girl story was she thought she could be in the Buffalo Club, so we had, you know, some of the Alisana guys. My friend Tony was out with us, and we're like, girls aren't allowed in the club. She's like, oh, I can, I can drink as much as you guys. I can hang with you guys. I can hang with you guys. She thinks she can hang. She cannot. She gets completely plastered and like starts just getting kind of annoying. So a few of us, we actually left 
we come back to the bus and it, our bathroom door is just wide open. For some reason, now this girl is completely naked and puke on the bus toilet and just kind of lay in there. What do you do at that point? It was like trying to get her up and like clean yourself and you gotta get off the bus, please. Like, yeah. we gotta leave soon. She got dressed and left. The girl we left on the side of the road was a different story. Just another night, everybody's chilling and, and immediately I'm like, crap, dude. Because you know, you always want people to just be chill and, and, and cordial and like human beings. Oh, this person starts talking about, oh, oh I, I tour with so many bands and I go on tour this and I'm like, okay. Like, can we talk about something else other than, like, I'm on tour right now. Last thing I want to talk about is tour. Tell me a funny joke or something. So we go to leave. Everybody's off the bus. We check because that girl was being super weird. We're like, we got to get her off the bus. We think she's gone. We start driving. I'm up front hanging out. I go back to the, to the back. I go to go lay down in my bunk. I click on my bunk light. And she was I was like, what the <laughs> is going on? I ran up here to the driver. I was like, yo, man. This drive, this girl's trying to sneak on the bus and come out on the road with us or something. She couldn't stop talking about it all night. So the bus driver's like, tell her to get up here and give me her phone. He was a really cool bus driver. So I was like, yo, you gotta go up front right now and give our bus driver your phone. She just looked super awkward, gave the driver her phone. The driver literally called the last number that she had called. I was like, hey, who's this? And she's like, ah, blah, 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 his friend. He's like, well, she's uh, on the corner. <laughs> at the corner of this gas station off of this exit, so you're gonna have to go pick her up. And he's like, see you later. I mean, what are you supposed to do? There's a gas station there, well, at least. It wasn't in the middle of nowhere or anything. I just can't believe that somebody would actually hide. And it, it just had to be my bar. Like, why not? What kind of person comes on somebody's bed, sneaks? I don't know. What, what, what Hides themselves away. Here's another one for you. <laughs> I'm sleeping in my bunk, right? This drunk dude comes stumbling in the bus, walks all the way to the back, comes in my bunk, lays on top of me, I didn't wake up for like I don't know how long oh, you I were in there. I don't about. know how long you were in there. So and I then, wake up in the morning and I'm like, I'm like, I, I go like this. I was like, I was like, who the f is in my so bunk he, right he, now? So he he starts touching my hair. He's like, who is this? Like trying to like lift up hair and see who it was. I was like, who the? F are I told him, what the f are you doing? <laughs> and you're like, dude, what? Is, what are you doing in my bunk? I'm like, this is my bunk, dude. <laughs> and you're like, no. He opens. He's like. This is your bunk! <laughs> and then he just gets out. <laughs> Sorry, bro. He goes in his bunk and goes to sleep. Because I could tell we were driving and stuff, so like, we're the bus is moving, and I'm like, how is the bus moving, and how is someone in my bunk with me right now? Like, this makes absolutely no sense. And it was super dark. I was so freaked out because that's. If I've had too much to drink, I walk myself to my bunk and I, I sleep. That's what I do. Or. Uh, I sleep right here in the front lounge or something, and I get up in the middle of the night and go to my bunk. So I was creeped Woke out. up to someone like, I was almost so spooning out. me, and I'm like, what the f are you doing, bro? <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. There's, there's plenty of other like funny little ones, but I mean, there's a handful for you, so. so yeah. Tori can get pretty funny sometimes. Yeah, thanks for hanging out.